I found something on the oldest Anarchy server in Minecraft that doesn't seem to have an explanation. In fact, it shouldn't even be possible in Minecraft, and it involves 2B2T's chaotic end dimension. Let me give you some backstory. Recently, I was looking at map data for all three of 2B2T's dimensions. When looking at the end from above, you'll notice these black lines that cut through the modern day terrain. For those unaware, these lines are empty void. I'm the one that generated them over half a decade ago using piston airships, back when everything past the main island was just void. But during my farthest flight away from spawn, as seen here, I fell out of my ship and died. When that happened, the ship was supposed to be frozen in place, considering that in Minecraft, whenever a chunk is not loaded, time essentially stops. But recently, out of boredom, I zoomed into the area where I fell and was shocked to see a small line of void chunks continue for over 800 blocks from where I fell. At the end of this tiny chunk trail was what appeared to be the remains of my original ship from 2015, still there. By all accounts, this chunk trail shouldn't exist. How could my ship fly for over 800 blocks with no pilot and with no one in render distance to load the chunks. It's actually kind of creepy. Even technical 2B2T players I've spoken to didn't have an explanation for this phenomenon. No one has been able to explain it. So today, we're taking a deeper look at this unsolved mystery by stepping inside 2B2T's end dimension, retracing our steps, and using some outside help to analyze how this could have happened over half a decade ago. Before we delve into this mystery, I'd like to thank Honey for sponsoring today's video. Online shopping is meant to be easy, so why is finding coupon codes that actually work so hard? With Honey, it doesn't have to be. Honey is the free online shopping tool that helps you find promo codes and applies them to your shopping cart automatically. When you're checking out on websites such as Target, Walmart, and other online retailers, a little box will drop down. Click Apply Coupons and it scans the internet for promo codes and boom, you just saved money. Since I've been doing more online shopping in these times, Honey has personally helped me pay less for the things that I need. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. If you don't have Honey, you're passing up free money. It doesn't cost anything, finds coupons with a click, and also works with PayPal and Venmo. It's legit. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash fitmc. That's joinhoney.com slash fitmc. And thanks again to Honey for sponsoring today's video. Here we are at a working portal about to hop into the end. As I mentioned, I won't be able to solve this mystery alone. I've enlisted the help of Ray's Works, who's a technical Minecraft YouTuber. On his server, he recently traveled all the way to the end dimension's world border using airships, and he's very knowledgeable about chunk loading. He's agreed to help me with solving this mystery, but together, we're going to need as much data as possible to figure out all the potential scenarios where the ship could have loaded chunks by itself. So I'll be heading out to the crash site on 2B2T to gather as much info as I can about the surrounding chunks, as well as recover what's left of my original ship. But before heading out to the site, I'll be making a stop at the ruins of my original end base and airship platform, DFC, to see it with my own eyes for the first time since 2015. Now, here's the hard part. Recently, the server's admin, Housemaster, has patched Elytra hacks to prevent players from having infinite flight. But in the process of patching them, He's made flying without hacks far more dangerous. You can get stuck in mid-air, take random fall damage, and sometimes your wings just won't open. It's probably the most dangerous time to be traveling in the end dimension, but it's necessary if we want to solve this mystery. Hey, my alt account got the achievement. All right, let's take a look around here. This is actually my first time being back in the end dimension since 2018. So a lot has changed. The entire end island has been flooded with a water cube. A guy in just regular diamond armor. This is not the place for you, buddy. This is kind of dangerous. Great. A dragon. Just what I wanted to see. 
Not only is it a dragon, it's a sea serpent too. Look at that. You know, in my 10 years of playing Minecraft, this is actually the first time I've seen the Ender Dragon swim. We're on the South Highway, we've made it out of the water cube. Now, you're gonna notice as we're walking in the end, the highways in this dimension are not nearly as advanced as the ones in the Nether. All that's separating us from the void right now is just a thin layer of cobblestone. Looks like someone's been pushing the end crystals away from the main island using pistons. That, Cause look how far away that trail goes. Another one, and this one's even farther. You can't even see the main end island anymore. Jeez. Excellent, the first void chunk border. Let's get down there and take a look. So this is what happens when old void chunks meet the new end islands. You get these massive chunk borders that look just as crazy as 2B2T's overworld. Someone was kind enough to build this ice highway using a redstone machine, but it'll take us far enough south where we can turn off towards our first destination. We've reached the first turnoff point. Look how massive these void chunks actually are in person. I mean, you can see both sides, those end islands are cut off completely. But from here, we're gonna head west and see what's left of my original end base before we head out to the crash site. This is the moment of truth. Housemaster, please let my elytra open and work, okay? Come on. Wow. This is gonna suck. This is easily going to be the most dangerous part of the whole journey. If we fall into the void, we are toast. Hopefully this tower works. Alright, there we go. It's working so far. Hopefully it stays this way. We just need to follow this chunk trail for another 6,000 blocks. This is easily the most uncomfortable I've ever been using an elytra. Oh, not good. Not good. Come on, open, open, open. Alright, I got pearls. Let's see if I can make it to one of those islands over there. Here we go. Oh, the trajectory is super weird right now. It's not doing the normal arc. All right, let's aim a little lower. Are you kidding me? It won't even register the pearl? I think I've got an idea. I'm gonna try to get a pearl to go right over the island and then I'll disconnect before the pearl actually hits. All right, let's right here. All right, please work. Moment of truth, let's reconnect. Okay, wings are open. Oh my god. See, this is why I told you it was gonna be a dangerous journey. Oh, look at that. We are actually not far from my end base, but it looks like someone built something out here. It, I mean, maybe it was an oasis at one point. I don't know, but hey, there's trees, there's flowers, there's water. Let's check it out. Maybe this will give us some clues. Let's see, Merrick was here. I was told to leave one area untouched. So that must have been the griefer of this place. R.I.P. End Oasis. Okay, so we don't know who built this thing originally, but I bet when it was ungriefed it looked pretty crazy. The moment of truth has come. Right out there should be my old end base. Let's do it. Flying an empty void is just so nerve-wracking. All right, here we go. Look at that. It, it looks like Swiss cheese, but it's still recognizable. Wow. This is what it looked like five years ago, and this is what it looks like now. So, I mean, it's like I said, it's recognizable, but it's taken a beating. You know, this is what I love about 2B2T, is that you can build things in the past and then come visit them in the future, and they're still there in some form. It's pretty wild. Alright, that's enough nostalgia. Let's actually get to the crash site so we can finally solve this mystery. We've reached the farthest south of the Void Chunk, so now we head east. We'll take a look at this. Here's the corner. So this means we are actually near the location where I originally died five years ago when I fell. I've located the Chunk Trail right here. As I thought, it's one chunk wide. I, c I still can't believe this thing is here. It shouldn't be. Now, there's this tiny little end island that's in the path of the Chunk Trail, but I believe that's because of how the end islands actually generate and populate. So that has nothing to do with this mystery. Coming up on the moment of truth, is my airship still there at the end of this chunk trail? Oh, would you look at that? It still is. That, uh, at least I believe that's the cobble. Wait, there's, there's diamond horse armor on what's left of the cobble over here. Why would this be here? That is the most bizarre thing. Wait, hold up. 
Here once lay Fit MC's old flying machine from before 1.9, claimed and used for further exploration by Argonaut in November of 2016. Wow. All right, I need whoever Argonaut is, I need to look them up right now. You are not going to believe this. I looked up Argonaut, and it turns out that four years ago, he tried contacting my old Twitter username to show he had discovered my ship. I had no idea these photos existed. And if you look closely, they show that the ship never actually made contact with the end island, which implies it somehow stopped on its own. That's very useful information. I'm going to take the cobble from my ship and then we can examine the chunk borders. Yep, just as I thought, the ship stopped short of the actual boundary. So now that we've confirmed that it was the ship that generated these chunks, it's time to compile all of the info and send it to Ray's works. Hopefully we can find an explanation for this weird phenomenon. I just got done talking to Ray's works after sending him all the info we had and without leaking our conversation, I'll paraphrase our findings. Now, it's impossible for us to know if this is the true cause, but it seems most likely. Apparently in Minecraft, having enough piston activity in a chunk can keep it loaded without a player, but only until the server performs an autosave, which would then unload them. A typical Minecraft server autosaves every 6,000 ticks, or roughly every 5 minutes, but the ship's speed was between 6 to 8,000 blocks per hour, so, for it to travel 800 blocks, it flew for 10 minutes by itself. That's a lot longer than a typical autosave. So, how did it keep flying? According to Ray, if the ship was moving through two chunks at the same time, while an autosave was happening, it would prevent the chunks from unloading until the next autosave. My ship must have been lucky enough to have been in two chunks at the same time. The fact that it stopped before coming into contact with the island implies that the autosave finally got to it in a single chunk, or the server simply restarted. So, to sum it all up, the airship was complex enough to keep loading chunks without a person, and it was flying at just the right speed to allow it to be crossing over the chunk boundary whenever the autosave happened. And the fact that it went 800 blocks means that it was incredibly lucky. So has this mystery finally been solved? I don't know, it seems like a likely explanation, but it's impossible for us to know the truth. But maybe you have some ideas as to what really happened here. Well, if you're one of my viewers and you enjoyed today's video, consider hitting that subscribe button. No pressure though. Also feel free to follow me on my socials, but that's it for today everyone. Take it easy, and make sure to stay away from ghost pilots.